Ryan Fitzpatrick just recently signed a new contract with the Miami Dolphins. He's 36 years old. It's a two-year contract with a one-year uh, with an out after one season. He remember last year he was the back, kind of the backup quarterback with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Um, it's it's very interesting this move because one, the Dolphins traded away their former quarterback Ryan Tannehill, and it looks like they could also be drafting a quarterback in this year's NFL draft. Um, I was curious looking at film, what kind of quarterback is Ryan Fitzpatrick? Who is he as a quarterback? Um, you know, he had a roller coaster season in 2018. At times, he was a starter. He was actually named a starter at two points last season and then also benched at two separate points last season. Very weird, very peculiar. Um, I just, we called it Fitz Magic early in the year, but I just was curious what happened? That dramatic roller coaster of a season, what caused it? Um, you know, it's very bizarre. And I, I just wanted to, you know, look at film and see what does the film say about Ryan Fitzpatrick? Uh, what happened last year? And what kind of quarterback is, are the Dolphins getting? From Ryan Fitzpatrick. So right off the bat, there are three takeaways I saw on film. Uh, the first one is this. He makes some really good plays. He, there's a throw against the Bengals uh, where he, his feet are not perfectly lined up, and he still throws an accurate ball over the middle. Uh, people got really, really mad at me when I said that uh, top quarterback and draft prospect Dwayne Haskins struggled with accuracy when his feet weren't perfectly lined up. This right here is an example of that. When Ryan Fitzpatrick's feet aren't perfectly lined up towards his target. He can still throw the ball accurately. It's a must. It's a necessary thing you have to do in the NFL. It drives me nuts that people were mad at me when I criticized Dwayne Haskins for that. Every NFL quarterback needs to do that. Dwayne Haskins cannot. Ryan Fitzpatrick can. He scored some brownie points of me right there. Um, now, he really does have some arm talent. He's got some, got some good throws. It's, his problem is not his ability to throw the football. He's fairly mobile. He can do a really good job moving around. Um, he does a lot of things quite well. What I learned uh, from Ryan Fitzpatrick is his mistakes come from mental errors. And one of the inherent flaws in the way that Ryan Fitzpatrick plays quarterback is he really heavily relies on his receivers to help him out and make a lot of big plays. I think the best way to describe this, uh, the, the, the monster three games Ryan Fitzpatrick had to kick off in the 2018 season, he had three games where he was fantastic. Uh, he, he had, what, were, what did the stats say? He had... 11 touchdowns, 3 interceptions, and 1,230 yards passing. 1,230 yards. That's pitch magic. That's crazy. And a lot of that can be attributed to the fact that his wide receivers just made really, really fantastic plays catching the ball. Um, now, this is actually not a strength of his. The fact that he does this, the fact that Ryan Fitzpatrick heavily relies on wide receivers is actually not a good thing and not a strength. Uh, because what that means is, and this is obvious, but it's worth saying, when his wide receivers do not make a lot of plays, he doesn't do well. He really struggles at times. Um, I know it sounds obvious, but he throws a lot of risky passes. He throws a lot of jump balls. He throws balls that are late with bad timing and in a really tight windows. He throws a lot of 50-50 balls, which are throws where there's a 50% chance the wide receiver is going to come down with the ball, and there's a 50% chance that pass is actually intercepted. Now, um, the Buccaneers had some really nice wide receivers. O.J. Howard, Mike Evans... Uh, Adam Humphreys, Cameron Brait, Deshaun Jackson, Chris Godwin, a lot of really good weapons all around. If the guys in Miami with Ryan Fitzpatrick's new team don't make a lot of really big plays at wide receiver, um, Fitzpatrick's not going to do as well. It's really, you're going to see a drop off in numbers. And I think a lot of, again, Ryan Fitzpatrick's meteoric success early in the year last year can just be attributed to the fact that his wide receivers were playing fantastic. Uh, now, he did have, I want to touch on something. Before he got benched, he had a game against the Steelers where he had three touchdowns, three interceptions, kind of blew up the stat line. And uh, I want to go through his three interceptions because they matter and they weren't always necessarily his fault. I want to talk about a little bit the way that struggles from an offensive line standpoint can lead to interceptions and how, yes, it was, of course, somewhat Ryan Fitzpatrick's fault. You can't blame the entirety of the offensive line. That's just not fair. But there were other factors besides Ryan Fitzpatrick's mistake that led to him throwing interceptions. So the first interception he threw was an interception on a ball that got tipped. This one is actually directly the offensive line's fault. Either, either it's a, a, the offensive line made a mistake or Ryan Fitzpatrick did not make a call the line to tell the offensive line to slide farther to the right and pick up the blitz. Uh, there's a really, really great blitz by the Steelers, and it's really poor communication and ultimately a missed assignment by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Steelers bring a six-man rush. The right tackle here needs to work out. He needs to work his way outside to pick up the blitzing linebacker. He doesn't. The ball gets tipped. The ball's intercepted. Now, his second interception against the Steelers, 
um, pressure forced Ryan Fitzpatrick to climb up in the pocket. And he, in, in, his, in the process of stepping up and moving up in the pocket, his shoulder points up and the ball sails over the receiver's head and is intercepted. This is a common theme I saw on film. As Ryan Fitzpatrick steps up in the pocket, often, many, many times, his shoulders would point up, his, his shoulders and his body weight would elevate up, and that would lead the ball to go over his target's head and sail above people. That happened many, many times on film. He threw interceptions that way. When Ryan Fitzpatrick climbs in the pocket, he has a habit of narrowing his base, not stepping into his throws, and allowing the ball to sail. Now, the third interception Ryan Fitzpatrick threw against the Steelers, uh, pressure because of the center missing a block. The center really badly missed a block. He got beat and manhandled. It caused a bad throw and easy pick six. And I think this is an example where it shows that not every interception, not every mistake Ryan Fitzpatrick made last year was necessarily all his fault. Offensive line struggles regularly come from either a guy getting badly beaten or an offensive line having poor communication and missing assignments. Uh, in the Steelers game, some of the struggles Ryan Fitzpatrick had early in the year were, I would say this, offensive line struggles played a small part in leading to Fitzpatrick's struggles and ultimately him getting benched. Now, um, through the first three games, Ryan Fitzpatrick played incredible. Again, 11 touchdowns, three interceptions, 1,230 yards. And the reason why he started the first three games of the year for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers was because their starting quarterback, Jameis Winston, got in trouble. He got suspended for the first three games of the year. Uh, now, because of his really good statistical uh, number, because Fitzpatrick played really well, he got named the starter after week three. So going into week four against the Chicago Bears, Ryan Fitzpatrick was named the indefinite starter. So as long as he's playing well, I think the, the Buccaneers had decided he's going to be the guy and going to play this season. So again, it's, again you got to know this. Week four, he's playing against the Bears. Jameis Winston, the starting quarterback, has been benched because Ryan Fitzpatrick is playing so well. Now, I don't know that the Buccaneers locker room was on board with Ryan Fitzpatrick being named the starting quarterback, the backup becoming the starter. I don't know that the locker room liked this. When I watch what happened um, against the Bears, the Buccaneers wide receivers played really, really terrible. Again, because of the play style that Ryan Fitzpatrick has, he relies on wide receivers to make plays. And um, they didn't, and he struggled. He looked really bad because of his play style. He threw a lot of risky passes, a lot of jump balls, uh, and the lack of effort was obvious from his wide receivers. They weren't making big efforts at the ball. They looked checked out of the game. Uh, there were drops. The right guard had a terrible effort, missed a block, leading to a sack. Even Mike Evans. Mike Evans is a highly paid one of the top wide receivers in the NFL. Not the best, but he's definitely a top-tier wide receiver. He just looked out of it in, the, in week four against the Bears. It looked like he wasn't engaged in the game at all. Again, I have a theory here that, you know, the receiver's lack of engagement, lack, the fact that they cared, makes me wonder if it was a silent protest against Ryan Fitzpatrick being their starting quarterback. Maybe the team was actually silently rallying around their, their former starter, Jameis Winston, saying, we want Jameis back. He's healthy. He's, he's not suspended anymore. We know Fitzpatrick did well, but we want Jameis Winston back. That's what it looked like at first. Um, now, <laughs> Jameis Winston didn't come in and do really any better. Um, but here's this, the uh, mistake that sealed the deal for Ryan Fitzpatrick. He was named a starter very briefly. Against the Bears, he threw a really costly interception that led to him being benched the first time this season. It was 3rd and 19. There were 2 minutes and 23 seconds left before halftime. And mind you, it's 35-3. to three. They are playing awful. The Bears are manhandling the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now, the ball is on the 24-yard line, which means that the Buccaneers were in field goal range. The Buccaneers call four hitch routes. That's where you run 12 yards downfield, you turn around, and catch the ball. Now, it's 3rd and 19. You're probably not going to get a first down in this situation. You're just trying to make the field goal a little bit easier, slow things down, make it shorter. If you're a quarterback pre-snap, you count the numbers. You say, okay, there are three defenders on the left. There are three defenders on the right. There's one linebacker short in the middle, and there's a deep safety in the middle over the top. Now, there's a corner on the left side of the field who's sitting really close to the line of scrimmage. He's over top of Deshaun Jackson. I believe that must have scared Ryan Fitzpatrick away from that side of the field because um, the Bears are backed way off. It's really interesting. Instead of trying to move defenders with his eyes, Fitz stares down Mike Evans 
and the defense reads his eyes, leading to an easy interception. This is a terrible, terrible decision. You cannot do this and get away with it at an NFL level. It's obvious. It's easy. He stares down his wide receiver. You can't throw the ball there if there's a defender sitting right over top of your receiver waiting for the hitch. It's too easy. You can't have that. And Ryan Fitzpatrick does a lot of good things, but throws like that are why he's not an elite quarterback. I'm going to go through a series of reads he makes that are really good. There's an RPO against the Eagles. RPO means run, pass, option. What you do here is you read the outside linebacker. If the outside linebacker gets depth or stays put, you hand the ball off, give it to your running back, allow him to run for yards. If the linebacker comes up towards the line of scrimmage at all, you don't run the ball, you pull the ball away, and you throw the slant right behind him. Ryan Fitzpatrick makes a good read here. It's simple. It's easy. Well done. Week one against the Saints, he does another really good thing. It's a, this is a strong area attack concept. It's very simple. You read the flat defender. The flat is an area on the field that's very short to the outside of the field. If the flat defender runs outside, you throw the ball inside to the spot route. He doesn't fly to the flat if he gains depth. Then you read the corner. What does the corner on the outside do? Does he get depth? Or does he sit near the line of scrimmage? If, he, if the corner sits near the line of scrimmage, you throw the corner route behind him. If the corner gets depth and backs off, you throw the out route. It's a very easy read. Here in this situation, the flat defender actually widens. He throws the spot route behind him. Ryan Fitzpatrick can play. He can make all the throws. He's good at reading a defense. He's a veteran quarterback. The problem is far too often he shoots himself in the foot. He regularly makes bad mistakes that you can't make and still be considered a top-level quarterback. That's the difference between the top quarterbacks and Ryan Fitzpatrick. Ryan Fitzpatrick is a marginal to average quarterback because of the amount of bad plays you see on film. There's a play against the Panthers. It's the end of the game, and Ryan Fitzpatrick simply gets impatient. He throws the ball up for grabs instead of taking what the defense gives him. This is a prime example. Over and over and over again, you see plays on film where Ryan Fitzpatrick simply doesn't have a lot of discipline. He throws the ball up for grabs. He makes really silly bad errors. You go, ah, dude, you were doing so well until then. He forces the ball into coverage far too often. Now he's going to play next year for the Miami Dolphins. At 2019, I guarantee he starts at least one game next year. I mean, a buddy of mine sent me a, a stat last night. My buddy Anthony sent me a stat. He said, Ryan Fitzpatrick has started at least one game in 12 of his 14 seasons in the NFL. But many times on film, he plays well. He's, he's not awful as a quarterback. He looked a lot better than the Buccaneers' other quarterback, Jameis Winston, most of the time I saw them. Here's the problem. Ryan Fitzpatrick's 36 years old. Jameis Winston was 25. The reason why the Buccaneers went with Jameis Winston is because he's 25 years old and he's making $20 million next season. The Dolphins signed a highly flawed quarterback. He throws a lot of risky passes and relies far too often on his wide receivers to save him. He makes a lot of bad plays, a lot of bad plays. It hurts to watch. Here's the thing, though. The Dolphins are going to move the ball. They're going to have some success. They're going to get a lot of yards. And I think the Dolphins are far more interesting now with Ryan Fitzpatrick as their quarterback than before when Ryan Tannehill was their quarterback. You know, last year, here, here's what you got to know. This the final two games for Ryan Fitzpatrick in 2018 say a lot about him as a player. They describe him perfectly. In six quarters, in a game and a half, he had 568 yards, a 66% completion percentage, but zero touchdowns and five interceptions. He was moving the ball incredibly well, but he couldn't finish drives because he kept shooting himself in the foot and making mental errors. Ryan Fitzpatrick can play a little bit. He's not awful. Uh, but hopefully, if you're a Dolphins fan, you are rooting for the Dolphins to either draft somebody or say we're tanking this year and we're going to get one of the better quarterbacks in the 2020 NFL draft uh, because Ryan Fitzpatrick is a duct tape quarterback. He works for a little bit, but he's not a long-term solution to the Miami Dolphins problems at the quarterback position. My name is Zach Schaumler. This is my podcast, Strong Opinion Sports. It is my favorite thing in the entire world. And I, I want to I ask for your help. I want this show to grow. I want more people to watch and more people to listen to this podcast. My dream is to do this show as my full-time job. I want to own it myself. I want to do it on the internet and have complete control. I don't want to do it for CBS or ESPN. I don't want to work for a big network. I want to own it myself. And if you believe in that dream, please do me a huge favor. Help me grow by telling your friends about this podcast. Share it on Facebook. Share a link on Twitter. Maybe you screenshot it. Put it on Instagram. I, I don't have a marketing strategy beyond this. This is all I have. You know, a lot of people, one of the most common comments I get on YouTube is, you have great content. We love your stuff, 
you deserve more viewers, what you should do is you should buy ad spaces on Facebook or Twitter or promote yourself and buy, buy revenue, like buy ads. I have no money. I am a broke college kid. I, I can't buy ad spaces. I, 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 don't have, I don't have money to pay for books. And so my plan, this is my marketing plan. This is my strategy. All I plan to do is put every ounce of effort I have into making the very best podcast I can. I believe if I make a great product that people believe in, that people like, then they will share it with their friends. And so if you agree with that, if you believe in the show, if you like what I do, please do me a huge favor. Tell your friends about it. Help me grow by telling your friends about this podcast.